Major research happening right now in our area. The University of Pittsburgh School of Medicine is now seeking approval from the FDA for a candidate vaccine. It could eventually be used in the battle against COVID-19. However, it may be a tool for other vaccines all around the world. Rick Dayton has been covering their work and is here now with the breaking details. Rick, what have you learned? They've had multiple medical doctors, multiple PhDs. They've been involved in this collaboration at the University of Pittsburgh and UPMC, funding coming from three NIH institutes. Their work on this vaccine method is now being published in a peer reviewed journal. Doctors believe it could change the way vaccines are delivered worldwide. It looks like a small piece of Velcro. It's officially called a micro needle array. It's a lot like a band aid uh, with hundreds of small needles. Uh, in this particular case, the needles are made out of a sugar substance, and we actually incorporate the vaccine directly into the needles. Combine that innovation with research of a man who has worked on coronaviruses for years, including the first SARS outbreak in 2003. Back then, we didn't have uh, the knowledge that we have now on what is needed uh, to, to build uh, an effective vaccine against uh, coronaviruses in general. That was the first emerging coronavirus. Now those years of research and understanding are being combined with the new technology. We think we have uh, generated a format of vaccine uh, that uh, uh, could be very effective. It could be relatively easy to, to manufacture and uh, to, to apply. From a clinical standpoint, Dr. Louis Falo says the microneedle array has many advantages. So this is an incredibly uh, safe approach. Uh, there is no bleeding with this approach. There's no pain because the needles are not long enough to reach the circulation or nerves. In addition to that, the am amounts of antigen that we're using are so small uh, that they don't cause any adverse effects in and of themselves. Each of the 400 microneedles are the width of a human hair, and they're only half a millimeter long. The whole thing is made of liquid sugar and mixed with the antigen doctors want to use in a vaccine. When the microneedles are hard, they're able to penetrate the outer layers of the skin, and then as they absorb moisture, they actually dissolve and release the antigen into the skin. So the needles are actually the vaccine. Dr. Falo hopes the next step is approval to take the microneedle array candidate to clinical trials. But he says the most important thing is finding an answer. Oh, the only competition here is the competition with the virus. I think we're all trying to work in the same direction. Uh, I think it's better when we don't compete with each other that we work together on this. And I think the virus is the real uh, enemy here. So the question becomes, what is next? Dr. Falo told me they have started that process, filing for phase one clinical trials with the Food and Drug Administration. It is a lengthy process, often spanning years. However, in light of the worldwide pandemic, researchers are hopeful they will receive approval and be allowed to begin moving forward with additional testing. David? Rick, it's absolutely fascinating. It is exciting that it's happening here. And you were telling me before this, this approach, these micro needles, really would use your skin as part of the process, right? And that's one of the things that they explain is that they were working with a lot of different people, biologists, skin biologists, dermatologists. Dr. Falo is a dermatologist, says your skin is really the first barrier against disease, against bacteria, against virus. So if you can use your skin and basically say to it, this is what we're looking out for, in the case of perhaps coronavirus or perhaps flu or something else, you can say then that your skin basically becomes a new barrier against that disease. Because it doesn't go down into the blood, there's no pain, it doesn't get to a nerve level, it literally goes into the first layer of skin, introduces the antigen there, the bad guy, if you will, and from then it says, okay, let's start building antibodies against this, protection against that, and that is where this whole thing could be a game changer. And it also doesn't have to be refrigerated, which means that from a worldwide standpoint, you take it to Africa, to South America, to the deserts, to the mountains, this becomes a whole different way of perhaps getting medicine to people. It's very exciting, but still, everyone's anxious for it to happen right away. Yeah. It's a 12 to 18 month time frame, right? I mean, I'm sure the researchers are anxious about that too. And again, you can't change how long those things take. The question is, can they speed up the process of getting approval to begin the next phase of trials? You know, if something takes two weeks to find out if it works, you can't do that in a day. It still takes two weeks to find those things out and then to do the testing to find out whether or not antibodies were developed, et cetera. So again, still a long way to go, but the fact that this is something new and different happening right here, a lot of people are taking heat.